Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is an 82-year-old male who has a history of aspiration pneumonia and abdominal pain. I'll give you a chance to look over the case briefly. Scrolling through it like this. Let's see what else we have here. With IV contrast. This is a CT abdomen only. Okay, so what do we see here? We see a dilated distal esophagus. And you have some debris, some fluid in the distal esophagus. This is esophageal achalasia, A-C-H-A-L-A-S-I-A. -A -A. Esophageal achalasia. It's where the very distal gastroesophageal junction, the distal esophagus becomes very tight and does not relax. It's a failure of relaxation of the distal esophagus. This causes development of prominence and large caliber of the esophagus. Very often, esophageal achalasia has a much larger esophagus even than what we're seeing here. And debris and fluid tend to build up in the esophagus and this predisposes to aspiration pneumonia, which is what this patient had, recurrent aspiration pneumonia. So this is the appearance of esophageal achalasia, a relatively mild example and it may be that it's more prominent up more superiorly, but we don't have a CT chest in this case. So esophageal achalasia is tight, narrowed caliber of the distal esophagus with dilatation of the esophagus proximal to that with debris and fluid typical of esophageal achalasia. This is also a nice depiction of the hepatic veins. Now, as I course inferiorly, you see them diverge. One, two, three, right, middle, and left hepatic veins. And then as we go upward, you see them converge into the inferior vena cava. A portion of the inferior vena cava courses through the substance of the liver and you can see that here. Here we see the inferior vena cava below the level of the liver. And as we come into this area, we see it become part of the liver or be embedded within the liver. And here again, we have the right, middle, and left hepatic veins. And the middle hepatic vein is really a good demarcation for the true left lobe versus right lobe. Some people designate the fissure for the falciform ligament here as a demarcation between left and right, but anatomically that's really not correct. But it is sometimes used in that manner, so just so you're aware of that. So those are the hepatic veins. And then as we course inferiorly, we come into the portal vein, the portal vein being a confluence from the splenic vein, which is coming from the spleen, of course. And here you can see the spleen. And here you see the splenic vein, which is fairly straight and positioned posterior to the pancreas, as we would expect. The pancreatic, or I'm sorry, the splenic artery tends to be very tortuous, and that's what we see here. It's, it's really swinging around left and right, very tortuous because there's really nothing to anchor it. No, it's not coursing in the retroperitoneum or in restricted portions of the thoracic cavity. This is someplace where there's really very little restriction on it, and it tends to become very tortuous in that area. So here we see the spleen, splenic artery, being very tortuous, as is often the case, splenic vein, being pretty straight and pretty much positioned immediately posterior to 
the pancreas itself and coursing directly to the splenic hilum. We see kidneys of, I'm sorry, we see cysts of the left kidney here. A tiny probable cyst, but that's sufficiently small that we would need an ultrasound or MRI to be sure that it is truly a simple cyst. These cysts, on the other hand, look very typical for benign cysts. Okay, so we see the splenic vein coming into the portal vein here, and if we follow the portal vein downward, we come into the superior mesenteric vein, and we should be able to see that on coronal images. Here is the portal vein, unenhanced, but we can see the superior mesenteric vein diving down inferiorly there. Chambers of the heart, right ventricle, left ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. Left atrium empties into the left ventricle, which has thicker myocardium. We have papillary muscles with corded tendinia connecting to the mitral valve leaflets. Tricuspid valve is over here. Adrenal glands, always check those little adrenal glands. That should be part of your litany that you go through whenever you review a case, just to make sure you have a mental note in mind to check the adrenal glands and make sure that it's not a little nodule or a small mass. The adrenal glands are common sites of metastatic disease, particularly from lung cancer. Okay, so the esophagus comes down here through the esophageal hiatus into the stomach, and that becomes the stomach, and you can see the stomach come over here, and the stomach continues to the first portion of the duodenum or the duodenal bulb, which would be about here, and then it courses inferiorly as the second portion of the duodenum. It crosses slightly to the left as the third portion of the duodenum, and then it courses superiorly as the fourth portion of the duodenum. And distal to the fourth portion of the duodenum is, the, well, that's where the ligament of trites is, and that transition point is where it becomes jejunum, and jejunum wiggles around the abdomen, squirms and courses through various loops toward the right lower quadrant. At some point it transitions from the jejunum to the ileum and uh, we can usually see it entering the right colon near the cecum at the ileocecal valve but we're just a little bit too high here and we don't really have images below that level, but that's where it comes in. Okay, so that's just a little bit of anatomy in a patient with esophageal achalasia.